three key traits of this character. He's a ghost, he's a boy, he's a boyfriend. But Beatrice, how's this gonna help us design him? Well, I've been doing research on the Monster High series, and by that I mean watching several hours worth of episodes, and I have concluded that having at least 20 romantic subplots is essential to the Monster High charm. Well, for Gen 1 at least. Getting together, speed dating, unexpected amounts of adultery allegations, general relationship drama, isn't that all so fun? In the spirit of 2010's media's romantic obsession, I am legally and morally obligated to make a boyfriend. For this character specifically, Ju Chu Huang, the Jiangshi or Chinese zombie, you can watch her video to see how I made her and find out more about her story. Our ghost boy actually has two forms and a rather complex backstory, so we're going to talk about his story and designs at the same time. My initial idea in the Tiangshi video was that he was a dating sim character who was actually sentient like Monica from the DLC. Chu Chu the Tiangshi plays the game and instead of murdering all the other dating sim characters and scaring her to double death, they just fall in love. But then this one commenter called Silly Sulky Silai gave me this very very good idea instead. Overcome by severe OC ship obsession, I briefly opened a Discord server and made two new friends, Pluton and Blub who've been helping me develop him and my other Monster High OCs. So if you're wondering why his backstory is so oddly detailed, that's why. Our boy's name is Takio Date, and he's half white American and half Japanese. I imagine he bounced between the US and Japan lots in his life. He's never really fit in. He's emotional, cheesy, and he likes stuff like writing, role-playing, romance. He gets excited too easily. He's withdrawn himself out of shame and doesn't share what he likes anymore because he got bullied for it. He's a shut-in now and spends most of his time gaming or programming or writing. His family doesn't get him either, so he's really lonely. And then one day he dies. And then he comes back as a ghost? Yay? He decides he'd rather not see what happened after he died. He decides to just ditch the real world in general and opts to corrupt his favorite game instead, which just so happens to be a dating sim. His parents had caught him playing it once and he told them that he was practicing his Japanese with it, but no, he was just playing it because the guys are cute. He makes himself sprites by mashing up the existing characters and starts writing just like he did when he was alive. So that's his first form, these game sprites, which are pretty boring in comparison to Monster High designs, but that is the point. Despite my not very anime art style, I'm trying to design a more subtle design that'd be more realistic in a Japanese high school dating sim. He's wearing a rather simple school uniform, call it pinkish red for that romantic feel with just this pink windowpane sweater vest to add interest and to link him to his real second form. But then there's his hair, which is Barbie blonde with pink highlights? Most anime characters only have one hair color, so it's a way to make him stand out and also feel a bit off from the rest of the dating sim boys. It also connects him to the Monster High aesthetic which famously revels in multicolored hair. His sprites also have rather closed off body language, which hints at him hiding something, but his expressions are super emotive and his language cheesy and affectionate. The contrast between these elements hit at this being a persona, like something just doesn't fit. But this is my attempt at a more clever design in a storytelling sense. I'm always going for the blatantly obvious most of the time, so this is a bit of a change. So what happens after he dies? He basically only lives in this dating sim and never leaves, except to like Google Japanese baby names and other writer stuff, because he writes and rewrites the plot and characters constantly. The dating sim world isn't really a world, it's more like a stage with painted backgrounds and a script to play. The other characters aren't real like him, so he writes them however he pleases and is basically role-playing with himself, which is sad but also funny. Eventually his parents sell the laptop, someone clicks on the game, they open it. It seems to be just a dating sim, they play it. The writing is a bit janky but it's charming in an amateurish way. But then things get weirder, plots get weirdly contrived and overly dramatic for something that's supposed to be a comfy romance. And suddenly there's this random blonde and pink character showing up that's not in any wiki at all? One day the player decides to just press all the wrong options for funsies, and they make the blonde one mad. Like, really mad. And then he says, Is this a game to you? Because it isn't to me. And the game glitches in a way it really shouldn't. Yep, this game is haunted. So the laptop gets sold again, and it happens again, and again. Takio tries to make people stay, 
he writes better drafts, tries to play a better character, or the wacky best friend. Sometimes he just stays in the background. He tries to make the game interesting for a special one-person audience. But he always freaks people out or says something he shouldn't be saying. When he gets nervous, sometimes he goes off script or glitches the game. Or maybe it's just too boring. And then the laptop is passed on to someone else, like a little curse. Then one day, Choo Choo's grandpa gets his hand on this super cheap second-hand laptop. The catch is that it's supposedly haunted, but given the fact that his granddaughter is literally an adopted zombie, he supposes it's not a bad deal. He gives her the laptop as a lovely present and she's very happy with it. She can do homework and google things and play Minecraft with the girls and of course binge this random pre-installed dating sim. Choo Choo gets just a bit addicted to it. Being a recently resurrected dead teenager makes life a bit hard and all the rigor mortis or well disability symptoms that are called rigor mortis in universe make getting out of the house too hard sometimes. Nothing like a nice romantic date with your 2D boyfriend to make you feel better. She even plays it when she's on call with her friends. It's really well written. Whoever translated this from Japanese is maybe making the prose a bit too Shakespearean but alright. This guy just feels off from the rest. The plots are kinda weird but also sincere and sometimes oddly melancholic. Eventually after playing all the other boys routes, she decides she wants to go for the one with the weird hair. The other love interests just feel too… shallow. And then they fall in love. The player character and the love interest Takeo. But that isn't the end of the game. Turns out there's a weird amount of epilogue to go through. A seemingly infinite amount? Because Takeo has fallen in love with Juju for realsies. And he's trying desperately to keep her around so he isn't abandoned again and he'd rather he not reset the game too. But even an experienced writer like Takio goes through hard times. When he's having writer's block, he resorts to ripping off scenes from her favorite K-drama she tells her friends about while playing the game. He starts writing in stuff about her too because he wants to really be with her but he can't. Like the player character, mysteriously falling ill on the same days Chu Chu can't make it to school. But there's this weird push and pull too. Sometimes the game gets too jokey and sometimes it's distant. Takeo doesn't know how to confront his super strong feelings and doesn't want to get too attached because nobody plays the same dating sim route for a year straight. Chu Chu, meanwhile, has gotten a grasp of what's going on at this point. I mean, she's also a resurrected dead teenager. She knows a haunting when she sees one. And Chu Chu likes him too. She knows in game, she only says what he lets her say since he's writing the dialogue options. But the more time has passed, the more Takio writes the options like something she would say and she's awfully charmed by it. And also by the remarkably suspicious and obvious writing. She's basically waiting for the day they can come out and stop playing this game and actually talk about this like people. And if you watch this video, you can see them actually talk it out and become a couple because me and Pluton and Blood wrote a 12 minute cutscene for it. Check it out, woo! It has actual dating sim segments in it, please watch it. I spent so long editing and making the art for it that my, my, my hand hurts, seriously. Once Takeo leaves the game, he uses his real form, which is what he looks like or remembers that he looks like. He stops playing a persona and feels confident enough to show who he really is to Juju and the world in all his pink neon glory. Unlike his more subtle and boring game sprites, this real form has this modernized monster high campiness. He wears baggy clothes with this technology and love core aesthetic mix for that supreme cute boyfriend vibe. He's also got some traits that canon monster high characters have like the floating chains and the dark slera. I was really excited when the commenter gave me this backstory idea because I really like Monster High ghost aesthetics and I think it's so cool that they're all different but still have some things in common. I really love having rules for character designs if you can't tell yet. In a real doll, all the chains would just be a tiny plastic accessory. <laughs> The chains tend to have special trinkets for each ghost character, so he has internet icons. Him and Chu Chu share internet icons and window pane print as a way to visually link them together. So when you see them together, you're like, okay, yeah, they're definitely dating. The dark sclera make him a bit spooky, but I soften that effect by giving him heart eye sparkles. And for his outfit, more heart motifs and pixel or glitch motifs. The multicolored sweater is supposed to represent the messed up colors with a glitch, but I don't know if this worked. 
It's essential that we show a romantic, cheesy character that's also a ghost and somehow also has internet and technology themes, so it's an interesting bunch of motifs to juggle. Here I am, doing iterations, as you can see. I use the symmetry tool because it saves so much time. I gotta love technology. My aims for Takio and Chu Chu's romance are to 1. Make something to appeal to the shippers in the imaginary fandom and 2. Use their relationship to demonstrate to the imaginary young audience how couples should healthily communicate during conflicts. I think that how their romance would play out in a cartoon is that Chu Chu would be seen playing this dating sim in the background for multiple episodes and then one day, Takio would just manifest and Chu Chu would be like, hey, me and my boyfriend to her friends and after hearing how they'd met, they'd be very doubtful of whether this is a good idea or not. In my head, he'd be the silly, nerdy boyfriend that somehow always manifests whenever Chu Chu says his name and when people ask, why are you here and are you following us? He just says, it's the power of love. You'll find out when you get your own girlfriend. But of course, the fun thing about writing characters with two other people is that in a way, there's like three different versions of the same character and they're all kind of canon, so that's fun. So who knows, maybe this isn't a real Takio. <laughs> they have a pure and wholesome first love romance. They make each other feel better about themselves because they both love and accept each other even though they're both kind of weird or at least feel that way about themselves. They both bond over being sort of shut-ins and dead teenagers together. Although Chu Chu doesn't know how she died and Takio is still sort of grieving his own death. I think that his character arc after enrolling in Monster High would involve being a real person again, making new friends and stuff so he isn't just Chu Chu's boyfriend and has the ability to give her space and, you know, be his own person with his actual real personality. I think that'd be a good webisode plot. This also brings us to another topic. One commenter said on Juju's video that having a boyfriend that exists only in a computer would be a great metaphor for having a long distance relationship because it reflects the struggles of being only able to communicate online. Since the idea has changed and Takeo exists in the world as a ghost instead of just in the laptop, this metaphor could only carry over if ghosts can't touch solid monsters, which I know they can touch objects, but can they touch non-ghost people? Send help? I guess I might have dropped out from Monster High Lore 101 too soon. Whoopsies. If Takio can't touch Chu Chu, could that still be some sort of like long distance relationship metaphor? I think the most direct symbolism would be if Takio and Chu Chu would be discouraged to date by their friends, saying that it's a bad idea seeing as they can't touch, which reflects on how people in real life think similarly of LDRs, but the two decide to stick together anyways. I feel like with LDRs, the plan is to stick together until they can unite in person. And for these two, that plan would be to wait until Takio can get an artificial body he can corrupt and control like he did with the game. Wink wink. They're both immortal undeads anyways. They have literally all the time in the world. No biggie. Other plot points that me, Floton, and Blub thought about is that we've actually been brainstorming mean girl characters a la Torelai and Nefra because they are fantastic plot devices. Takio would definitely get bullied near instantly upon his enrollment. His tendency to angry cry probably doesn't help with that problem. But it'd be so interesting to write a mean boy character fighting with Takio. Especially since he can't really beat up a ghost, they can only hurt their feelings. We'll let you know how these mean girl characters are gonna turn out though. We've been cooking in the back. <laughs> so here's the final design. The main feeling I want you to feel when you see him is cringe cute. Just look at his stupid heart his hair is making. Is it working? Does he like make you cringe but in an endeared way? To be honest, while working on this project, I was really embarrassed by the sheer amount of energy and effort I put in solely to edit this 12 minute romantic confession scene. But you know what? I just love me some ships. And I love romantic confessions so much. Do you guys like romantic subplots and shows? Or do you guys prefer less romance-centric media? Let me know in the comments! I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you again to my dear writing buddies Blob and Pluton for being here. It's so fun to discuss the same character of other people and try to hash out our different interpretations. I promise I'll be back on crafting the perfect main girls for Monster High Generation B or Monster High Gen B, which is what I'm calling this series now. Like and subscribe to see more videos. Bye!